Hey folks, uh, today we're going to talk about the Lorentz force, um, and that is the force that a charge experiences when it is in an, a magnetic field. Now, um, it, I have some demonstration videos where I'm actually showing the right-hand rule in the video, but it, it, if you don't have those, or if you're not going to watch those, or, or you want to write this down, so over here it says right-hand rule, that's RHR uh, for Lorentz force. And the version I use is you point your fingers in the direction of the velocity of the charge, or if there's a flowing current in the direction of the conventional current, and you curl your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. And then your thumb represents, when you stick your thumb like a hitchhiker, it represents the force acting on the particle. So if you want to write that down, you know, pause the video and go ahead and do that. If you already have it, you're all good to go. So before we talk about the Lorentz force, I'm going to do a little review of electric force. Now, the electric force is very, very simple. Okay. If I have an electric field, like let's say that were an electric field, okay, and I were to put a positive charge into that field, that positive charge would feel a force in the direction of the field. If I were to put a negative charge into that field, the charge would feel a force in the opposite direction of that field. And the magnitude of that charge would be simply the charge, or I'm sorry, the magnitude of that force would simply be the charge times the electric field. Very, very simple. Okay. Now, um, that's electric force. Well, Magnetic force is a little trickier, okay, as far as direction goes. Okay, the equations are simple, but the direction is a little tricky. That's where this right-hand rule comes in. For a magnetic force, okay, the Lorentz force, so that's our force, magnetic, so I'll put a little b here, is equal to the charge, q, times the velocity of the charge, and that's a vector, cross... The magnetic field. Okay. Now you might recall what um, cross product, what does that tell you about two vectors? It tells you how perpendicular they are. What trig function tells you how perpendicular two things are? Well, that's sine of the angle. So the magnitude of this would be QVB sine of the angle between the V and the B. Okay. In the next video, I'm going to do some mathematical examples with you. We'll plug some numbers in and try that out. In this video, I'm just going to focus on direction of this. Okay. So, for instance, let's say I have a magnetic field, um, and we'll, we'll also make it point to the right. So now instead of an E, it's going to be a B field. Okay. Now, again, what makes that magnetic field? Well, somewhere, one thing that could make it is moving charges somewhere. That'll be our next uh, topic in the next chapter uh, will be the, the more details about the magnetic field. But for now, let's just say it's there, okay? And let's say we have a charged particle. Let's say the charged particle is positive, okay? And let's say he's moving down the page like so, okay? So um, the force on that charge is going to be perpendicular to both the velocity and the magnetic field. Okay, now looking at that picture, the velocity is vertical, the magnetic field is horizontal. What directions could be perpendicular to both? Well, it's either got to be into the page away from you or out of the page towards you. So the force will be one or the other. Now, as a quick review, uh, we use dots to represent out of, and we use x's to represent into. And that's one thing I've heard is that's based on an arrow. If you saw like a bow and arrow, if you had an arrow coming out of the page at you, you would see the tip of the arrow, that would be the dot. And if the arrow is going into the page away from you, you would see the fletching, the feathers on the back of it. So that, that's why we use the dot and the X there. So our force in this case is going to be either the dot or the X, but which one? Okay. So you got to do your right hand rule. So if, if literally on the page, if you take your hand and face it with the velocity, so your hand's going to face down, and by the way, you're welcome to turn your page <laughs> to make this work. Because like right now, I'm on my computer screen doing this. And my, my hand, I'm having to kind of twist my arm to get my hand to point straight down. 
but I, I twist my twist my arm so that my hand points straight down, and then I rotate my hand until my fingers curl with the magnetic field to the right, and I stick my thumb out, and my thumb points toward my face. So the force in this case is out of the page. So that's your force. So this little charge would come flying out of the page at you. Okay. Um, what if this little guy was going at an angle? Okay, like so. Well, you're still gonna get the same answer if you if you face your fingers like that during, uh, along that diagonal, and then you still curl them with B. Your thumb's still gonna point out the page at you. The difference would be the angle would be less than 90 now, so you'd get a smaller magnitude of force. But the direction is still the same. It's still out of the page. Okay. Now, what if that little positive guy is going parallel to the field? Well, then there's going to be no force acting on him. So he will continue in a straight line. Okay, there's no force acting on him, him at all because there's no part of the velocity that's perpendicular to the magnetic field. Uh, what if we had a negative charge doing this? What if we had our, our, an electron or something negative going this way? Well, there's two routes to go here. One is to say, well, I know it's going to do the opposite of the positive charge, so the force will be into the page. Okay, so that's one way to do this. Or the other way is for a negative charge, you can use your left hand. This is called the right hand rule. That's for positive charges. You may use your left hand for negatives. So if you stick your left hand down the page, rotate it until your fingers curl to the right, your thumb, your left thumb will now point into the page away from you. That's that force. So that, that little guy would be deflected away from you. Okay. Um, another example of this is let's say our magnetic field looks like this. So our magnetic field is pointing away from us into the page. Okay, so let's say that's our magnetic field. And let's say I have uh, two charges racing. Here's a positive charge moving to the right. And here's a negative charge moving to the right. Okay, uh, which, in which direction would the force on each of those be? Okay, well, for the, the positive charge, you would put your hand to the right. Then you would rotate your hand until your fingers curl into the page. And you stick your thumb up like a hitchhiker, and your thumb should point up. So there's your force. Okay. For the negative charge, we know that the force is going to be the opposite way, so it's going to be down. Or if you use your left hand, you point your left hand to the right. You curl your fingers so they point into the page with the magnetic field. Your, thumb, your left thumb will point down, so that's your force. Okay. So um, that's how you figure out direction of these forces. Now, this version of the Lorentz force equation is for an individual charged particle moving. So if you have an electron moving, or a, 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 would say you were to have an alpha particle, which is two protons and two neutrons uh, moving, you would use that version of the equation. But oftentimes, we don't have an individual charge moving. We have a current moving. Okay, so how do we deal with that? So in that case, the force magnetic um, will be Q velocity. Okay, well, if you have charge moving through a wire, let's say, that would be L, the length of the wire over time. That's your velocity. Okay, so uh, how much, you know, how far did the charge get in a certain amount of time? And then uh, cross B. Okay, and then we're going to rearrange here Q divided by time is current. So you get IL cross B. Okay, so that's the version of the Lorentz force equation you use for a current carrying wire. And that's also why up here for fingers, I said it could be the velocity of the individual charge or if you have positive current flowing. So all these pictures would be exactly the same. If I made these wires with positive charges moving, you would, you would use the right hand rule. If you had wires with negative charge moving, you would use the left hand rule. So it's the same rule. Um, it's just a slightly different way to look at it. If you have like three milliamps of current flowing through a five meter long wire, you would use this version of the equation. All right. In the next video, we'll, we'll do some numbers and uh, we'll, we'll play around. Uh, hopefully I'll see you then.